Awesome. All right, judges, are we ready? Awesome. Time. There has never been a more exciting time to be part of the specialty coffee community. We're seeing changes with all aspects of coffee, from variety to processing, roasting to quality control, even brewing methods and technique. But all of this begs the question, what is the role of the barista in this ever-progressing world? For me, the answer comes down to these three pillars. Innovation, refinement, and adaptation. Exploring these innovations, refining our skills, and adapting to advancements. I believe this is the key to driving our amazing industry forward. Now, our time today is heavily influenced by these three words. They're deeply woven into every decision I've made and every drink I'll serve. And I can't wait to show you how. So, let's get started with some espressos. And judges, if you could please write down these tasting notes. Of red cherry, blood orange, and yellow peach. It's gonna have a medium weight, a juicy texture, and a lingering rich finish. And today, I'm using a recipe of 20 in, 47 out, in 30 seconds. All right. As a barista, innovations make our lives easier. But we all know easier doesn't always equal better. So over the last few months, I've been sifting through the ever-growing range of tools to find out what works best. And these are the innovations that I've decided to use. The first is the Weiss distribution technique. I found this gave me the best possible distribution, leaving my coffee as even as possible from top to bottom. And today, I've decided to use the auto comb to achieve this. Now this is a refinement of the traditional method. And it works by using a geared handle with a set of 13 needles that gently distribute the coffee around. And by adapting to this method, not only has it made it faster, more efficient, but leaves me with a tastier cup of coffee. Now, after finding the perfect distribution method, I explored the impacts of collapsing. And after hours of experimentation and refinement, I found by gently vibrating my handles, this gave me the best result. Now, when we tap, we only apply vertical pressure. So the pucks might look even, but the densities could differ. However, by applying 50 hertz of vibration, I'm gently dispersing the coffee particles vertically and horizontally, filling any voids that still may be present. Judges, as you can see, it leaves me with a flat bed of coffee before I tamp. And by adapting to these methods, not only do I achieve higher extraction yields, a more balanced espresso, but it contributes to that juicy texture you're about to experience. Now, progression is all around us, and the coffee itself is no exception. So today, I'm going to be serving you a fascinating new varietal called Omligon. Now, the exact origins of this varietal are unclear. However, it is thought to be found in an abandoned research centre in Wheeler a number of years ago. The producer of this coffee, Nesta Lasso, explored this new varietal and planted this coffee with unknown results. And this varietal is thought to be a mutation of Ketura and takes its name from its fascinating shape, belly button in Spanish. Now, just like baristas, it's the role of the producer to innovate, refine and adapt. And that's exactly what Nestor did. On his farm, El Diviso, in Wheeler, Colombia, at 1,700 metres above sea level, he decided to produce this coffee as a natural. And Nestor is constantly innovating, and this is a perfect example. Placing the cherries in polypropylene, bioreactors for 72 hours, to ferment in musto and saccharomyces yeast. This resulted in a very unique flavour profile. Now, judges, if you please assess the crema, but just hold off drinking, just for a minute. Now, the process didn't stop there, because Nestor is constantly refining his technique. Once the coffee came out of the bioreactors, he placed it in open plastic bags for 60 hours. This increased to, to oxidise, and this increased flavour intensity and texture. And by adapting the saccharomyces yeast from the wine industry, he was able to achieve more flavour clarity, directly translating to that cherry in your espresso today. So, judges, when you're ready, I'll get you to stir your espresso 10 times. Enjoy with three sips. And that silver tin is for your dirty spoon. Enjoy.
All right, judges, when you're ready, I'll get you to write these tasting notes down for your milk course. A boysenberry ice cream and malted chocolate. And if you're unfamiliar with boysenberry, it's a hybrid across raspberry and blackberry. Now, over the last few years, we've been seeing lots of innovations in the milk course, from cryodesiccation to freeze distillation. These two methods have produced some of the best milk coffees I've ever tried. And it's a perfect example of the role of the barista in this ever-progressing world. However, over the last 12 months, I've been looking at ways to refine these methods, a way to remove just water from the milk, leaving all the important minerals behind. And I found a method that does just that, vacuum distillation. Now, this is the process of applying a gentle heat to frozen milk under vacuum pressure to remove some of the water content. This allows the water to turn to a vapor at temperatures as low as 20 degrees, preserving the flavors of the milk we would have lost if we applied more heat. And by adapting to this method, it allows me to have complete control of the amount of water I take out. In this case, 33%. This left me with a balanced milk and a rich and creamy texture. Now today, I'm using a recipe of 21 and a half, 35 out in 30 seconds. Now I'm using full cream cow's milk because I found it best articulated my coffee's flavor. Now with a refined milk, I needed a refined roast. So my roaster and I use modern innovations such as roasting software to meticulously control every variable we could. We slowed down the drum speed to 50 RPM to maintain a rich sweetness. Seven heat adjustments to articulate the acid. A minute airflow adjustments to maintain a steady declining rate of rise. And finally, a two minute and 20 second development time for flavor intensity to cut through this rich and creamy milk. Now, judges, please enjoy. Be back with you in a minute. Cheers. Enjoy. All right, judges, now for the signature course. The role of the brister is to innovate, like the use of the vibrating table and vacuum distillation. The role of the brister is to refine, like the use of the auto cone. And the role of the brister is to adapt to all these advancements. But it's up to all of us to use these uh, three pillars, just like Nestor did, producing this amazing obligon. And just like my roaster did, crafting the perfect roast. We're all part of the same community that work together to produce the final beverage. And by doing so, hopefully we inspire the next generation to do the same. So my concept, my signature course today, is to take the inspiration I've received from innovating, refining, and adapting as a barista, as well as from my producer and roaster. So, starting with the producer. I've taken inspiration from Nestor's innovative approach to fermentation and his ability to control flavors with yeast and bacteria. But today, rather than using Saccharomyces yeast, I'm gonna be using Lactobacillus bacteria to highlight those tropical notes in this coffee. So for this ingredient, I'm adding 10 mils of a vacuum boiled, sorry, of a lacto-fermented raspberry. And to create this, I've got 100 grams of raspberries, and I've adapted the environment in this jar to produce just lactobacillus bacteria to grow by adding 2% salt. I then store this for four days 
at 23 degrees Celsius, where the lactobacillus bacteria converts a sugar to lactic acid. Now, I chose raspberries because it works perfectly with the tropical notes in this coffee to give us a new flavor of guava in this sauce. Now, for the roaster. I've taken inspiration from my roaster's ability to refine these roasting profiles to new varietals, such as the Obligo. So for this ingredient, I'm adding 10 mils of a clarified milk solution. And to create this, I've got 100 mils of the milk concentrate I use in your milk course. And I'm refining this ingredient by adding 5 mils of a citric acid solution. I then place this on the vibrating table over there to help me separate it into curds and whey. I then pass this through a paper filter. By adding this to the drink, it works perfectly with these boysenberry notes we had in your milk course to give us a new flavor of toffee apple. And finally, the barista. I've taken inspiration from vacuum distillation. And I've taken this innovation and I've adapted it to this ingredient. So for this, I'm adding 10 mils of a vacuum boil bergamot tea. And to create this, I've got 100 mils of room temperature water, 10 grams of a bergamot tea. I then place this in a vacuum chamber at 500 mTOR for 20 minutes. But rather than freeze the tea, I left it as a liquid to, uh, to let it boil at 20 degrees Celsius, preserving the flavors of the tea we would have lost if we applied more heat. Now, I chose tea because it works perfectly with the cherry in this espresso to give us a new flavor of dried apricots in this course. And finally, the most important ingredient, the espresso, an ingredient that we all played a part in creating. I've added four espressos of the Obligon, extracted to the same numbers as your espresso course. I'm serving at 10 degrees for flavor clarity today. And by placing in this blender, it helps create a tighter foam structure. Now judges those tasting notes again for this course. Guava, toffee apple, and dried apricot. Now please ask that you wait until I call time to assess this drink. Please take three sips and swirl before every sip. Now judges, the specialty coffee industry is full of innovation, refinement and adaptation. We are constantly seeing new ideas and coffee reaching new heights. The very best baristas are able to refine and adapt these new ideas to push the industry forward and to inspire others. And just as this competition has inspired me to innovate, refine and adapt, I hope I have inspired someone else to do the same. So thank you so much and please enjoy. Time. And thank you very much, uh, Jack. Uh,